Hey guys, I'm Andrew Ehrman, Director of Battery Pack and Cell. And I'm John, a mechanical design engineer for the Battery Pack team. Today we're here to talk to you a little bit about cell performance and cell production and where we're at with the whole process. Yeah, so starting off with the cell, we start off with a set of requirements uh, typically set by either internal customer or external customer. So one of the key things is the capacity of the cell, uh, what kind of outputs we're looking from it from a voltage standpoint and capacity standpoint. And then we have some things like uh, 10 second pulse rate, 30 second pulse, uh, how fast can we charge the cell here at Atlas. We're shooting for 15 minute charge time. Um, to be able to achieve that, it starts basically from the ground up. So to start off the process for the battery development on the chemistry side, we start with a half cell, which is either an anode or a cathode. Then we move up to a coin cell, which we make right back here in our chemistry lab. And those are those little round cells that you have inside of your remote, like in your vehicle. Um, from there, we do a single layer pouch cell, and then we move up to a multi-layer pouch or a prismatic cell. Um, what we're looking for early on in that cell uh, production is we're looking at the specific capacity of the anode and the cathode. Some other things we evaluate is the different electrolytes. So we look at all these different suppliers and see which one is going to work best for us to meet those internal requirements, um, as we mentioned. So now we're going to talk about the cell to pack integration. What are some of the requirements there? How do we evaluate what cells go into a pack? Um, John's going to tell us a little bit more details about grading of the cells and how we evaluate that. Yeah, so we start out by setting a, a list of requirements. Um, uh, main requirements are uh, DC internal resistance, uh, cell capacity, and then the actual physical dimensions of the cell. Uh, for DC internal resistance, we're aiming to hit about 2 milliohm, uh, which is really low, which results in uh, not allowing the battery to heat up uh, during a charge and discharge cycle, or it prevents the battery from heating up to a significant degree. Uh, as well as the capacity, we want something that's going to be high performance um, and actually carry out those 2,000 life cycles. So what, uh, what amp hour are we targeting from like an A grade or a B grade cell? Like what does that look like? For an A grade cell, we're looking at something closer to 12.4 uh, amp hours. A B, we're looking around 12, 11 to 12 amp hours. Um, and then we go down and batch into four different uh, batches actually, or bins. Um, uh, we have A, B, C, and D. Uh, the A is for uh, pack solution. Um, so it's a top of the notch cell. You have low resistance and high capacity. Um, for a B grade cell, that can be used for energy storage or charging, uh, where the capacity not, might not be as high, but it still performs well. Uh, for C and D grade cells, we're looking at tearing those down and recording data and learning from our, uh, our production and uh, formation and qualification steps to see how we can improve that process. Yeah, and that's really important, obviously, because we're looking to see why did the cell not meet expectations? Uh, see if there's anything in the manufacturing process that we can improve. Um, looking at the chemistry itself, seeing if there's any issues there, or just seeing if you know we had enough electrolyte. Uh, what does it look like inside of there? So we do that tear down right in our chemistry lab, just like the coin cells. Um, that's super important, obviously, to determine what's going on inside the cell. Obviously an A and a B grade cell, those are good, those move on into a pack solution, but the C and D, we typically tear those down. It's also critical to make sure that all, pa or all cells with the same grade go into the same solution. So for an A grade cell, you wanna match it with other A grade cells to make sure that our active balancing system uh, properly operates and there's not any kind of uh, you know, current inrush to a supercell uh, or anywhere along the way in the pack. Yeah, so maybe we can describe like what a supercell is. We kind of have one sitting behind us here. Um, you know, this is this is basically 18 cells in parallel, and all of those have to be matched together uh, so that way they perform in the pack, as John was saying. If they all had different in internal resistances or if they had different uh, capacity, that all limits the performance of that supercell, and it becomes really hard to balance. So we we bin those, and then from that bin we create you know a module and those modules go into the pack solution. Um, and as John mentioned, like the internal resistance is also critical for the charging and discharging cycles. So if you have a really high cell resistance, you're gonna heat up these terminals here on the, on the cell, uh, I'm sorry, on the supercell, which is gonna cause heat into the cell itself. And maybe you can explain like, how does the heat transfer? How do we heat uh, a module, cool module? Why is that important? Yeah, so because of our, our cell design, where we have essentially a tabless design, where the cell is actively cooled axially through the terminals, 
Um, it's, it's pretty easy to dump a lot of heat in and pull a lot of heat out of the cell uh, because of the conductive layers. Can um, you explain, I guess, what a tabless is? Like, why is, what's different about our pouch cell? Uh, why did we land on this design? Because um, you're talking about tabless. Not mm -hmm. everybody knows what a tabless cell is, right? Right, yes. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the Atlas pouch cell. Here's a pouch cell, and it may not look as uh, similar to a uh, conventional pouch cell, but this is what our design is, and it's uh, intended to be essentially internally the same as a cube cell, uh, but uh, it, it uses the same uh, chemistry, the NMC chemistry, um, and uses the axial cooling of the, uh, the electrode layers themselves. Yeah, and this one was specifically a customer request. So they asked us to um, basically package this in a pretty tough uh, in environment, if you will, really tough packaging envelope. So what we did is we designed this, as John mentioned, has very much the same design as the cube cell. You can see like the aspect ratio of the terminals. We have a very short distance. This is actually the same distance that's in the cube cell. Uh, why is that important? Um, basically, that's how we transfer heat through the cell. So by having that short distance between the terminals, we can maintain a two to three degree delta across the terminals, two to three degrees Celsius delta across the cells. Um, and why that is important is because we heat and cool the cell to allow us to fast charge these. You know, our target is 15 minutes. To achieve that 15 minute charge, we have to heat the cells up. And we do that over two or three minutes. And then once we hit that, we're at, you know, a four to five C charge rate. And then we're bringing that cell back down to where it wants to live. And that's really important because if you keep a cell at an elevated temperature for a long period of time, it affects the cycle life of that cell. So that's why, you know, we're able to prove out a lot of the same stuff on this cell as we do on the cube cell. Okay, now let's talk about production, where we're at with this current cells. John, can maybe give us an update on testing as well. Yeah, so we're actually in, uh, are still in our mass production trial phase. We've produced thousands of cells, um, as well as dialed in our formation and qualification processes uh, to ensure that we're actually reaching our capacity and DCIR goals. Additionally, we're taking that life cycle data and pushing it to the algorithm for our battery management system to improve upon that and optimize that system itself. So that's where we're at with the cell production. Stay tuned for more updates.